time I remember day 21 and I'm starting to get sad. Femoremember is always the most creative time for me. It's the time where I come up with the most out-of-the-box ideas the whole year, so I'm kind of sad that we only have a few more prompts to go. So let's have a look at number 21. This is the bag. Our animal today is the kangaroo. And our snack today is an Egyptian one. It's a cookie filled with dates. So it's kind of like a fig newton, but with dates instead of figs. There's two in a package, so this is what they look like. And they're round instead of square, like you would know the fig newtons if you know them. <laughs> So good. I'm a huge, huge fan. I'm easily giving this 9 out of 10. They're not very sweet, but they're chewy. For me, these are just fabulous. If you ever go to Egypt, you need to try these. <laughs> Greetings to Eman. <laughs> so let's check out what we need to do with our kangaroos today. So here's a close up of the snack. So it says dates filled cookies, super yummy. I hope you're enjoying your snack as well. <laughs> but now let's concentrate on our prompt. So we have button and tea bag. Again, both are things I love. So let's tackle the tea bag aspect first. So I have a good collection of tea bags to use. These are really great to have on hand for junk journaling. But if you've never done this, let me quickly show you how I get to this stage. It's really very, very simple. I have two tea bags here from teas I have enjoyed the last couple of days. This one is from black tea. This one is from lemon green tea. So I'm just going to Carefully open the top. Sometimes it helps to use a tool of some sort. Like this. Mine is sewn together. You see the string here? Some are stapled together. So then you need to take that staple out carefully. So if they're threads, you can easily cut them. This is what holds the tea bag together because it's just a folded paper like this. And then you just gently take it apart here where you see the seam. You can just pull it apart right there. Then you can get rid of your tea. I think the tea might be good for the plants. I'm not sure. I know coffee is. I'm guessing tea is as well. And there we have a beautiful tea bag. And as mentioned in other videos, I love keeping these labels as well. They're really great for collaging. This one here, for example, see that has the staple, but it works exactly the same. I'll just pull it open. Yes, I know I'm tearing it a bit. I don't care. They need to look grungy anyway. And then I need to open the staple or just pull it out. That's very easy to open. So here's the difference between the green tea and the black tea. And it's great to have a little bit of a color variation. And I found out that it's best to hang them up to dry. That way for me, they're dry overnight. So I can now add these to my collection. What I'd like to do is to make some bigger clusters with some nature elements. So I'll use this one just because it's a little bit of a different color than my other tea bags. And 
maybe one that's a little more grungy. This one, for example, looks great. And why not use the one that I got from Louisa, which was in the scraps stash that she included in her journal. I placed the tea bags on some baking paper because I will be using matte gel to adhere some elements. So I want to have a surface underneath that I can then take the tea bags off without them sticking. I have this cute tin in which I have some dried and pressed plants. I think this is a great opportunity to use some of these. I could take one of these. I don't know what they're called. Are they husks? I don't know. They're very cute. So where would we see it the most? Maybe on this one here from Louisa. Then how about either some leaves or some petals? These are tulip petals. We don't see them <laughs> very well there. Whoops. No laughing while working with tea bags. <laughs> uh, I mean, we see them a little bit more here. Mm, not great. Oh, you know what I see? I have not used this incredible Edelweiss that Louisa sent me. I think this is the perfect project to include this yes so what do we put here not this because we can't see these petals maybe some leaves mm -hmm. on this one i could maybe add one of my hydrangea petals <laughs> obviously i didn't press these but i'm going to pick one that is sort of flat could go here. Then I also have this beautiful brick box where I collect my book parts. One of my favorite elements to use in collages. And I haven't used any of them in Defamer Ember. So we need to change that for sure. This is a piece torn off a vintage book cover. If you're just going to cover your hardcover anyway, you could first try peeling off the original cover. You get beautiful pieces like this or like this. And then I've punched holes into it with my hole punch. So that might be a nice piece to add. Making a bit more narrow I think would be better. Let's see if we can fray this. Let's try it with the edge of the scissors. Whoops, it's totally fine. I still have this beautiful piece, which now even looks more grungy. And I just tore it again, totally fine. Maybe I'll actually tear it one more time on this side. That definitely looks more grungy. So to which one shall we add this? Does it go here? Maybe we'll do that. And maybe we'll add this piece. Even the back side is a beautiful piece for a collage. I think I'll take the back side. Then there's beautiful pieces like this, which is from the spine of a vintage book. Maybe underneath this one. I have pieces like this, which I've already stitched on, so that's perfect. I have this headband of the spine, you know, on the top and the bottom. You know how a lot of times you see in journals where dried flowers are attached by a strip of washi tape? Well, instead of the washi tape, we could use this headband. A little piece of coffee dyed cheesecloth. And if you're insecure about which elements to add to your clusters or any other project, just try them out. Audition different things, different elements, different colors, and just see what you like. I feel like this one here needs some gold thread.
little hard to see. For this one, some red thread. I like to add similar elements since I want these to be a series. And a green thread to this one here. So there's the red one and the green one and the gold one. So now for the not so fun part of gluing everything down. So as I mentioned, I'm using matte gel. Use what you're comfortable using. You can also use a PVA glue, a craft glue, maybe thin it down a little bit with water, Mod Podge. Use what you have. I love this matte gel. In this case, I'm not doing the top down gluing method. I will take this off as a bundle. And then I'm going to start off by adding my matte gel to the whole tea bag because I want the whole tea bag to become a little bit more stiff and have a little bit more substance. And as I am adding this matte gel, I'm realizing I have no clue how to add my kangaroo to this. So I should probably start thinking about that. I'll add my cheesecloth. Then we need our golden thread. This golden thread is really kind of hard to work with. It has a life of its own because it's sort of stiff and doesn't really want to stay where I want it to stay. <laughs> I just decided I want this to have a different color. So let's try adding some fossilized amber distress oxide spray to it. Okay, it has definitely taken the color, but I want to add some more color. So I'll add a little bit of walnut stain as well. That was a lot. So let's add some more fossilized amber on top, especially. Now I have to dry this. The effect is not as great as I would have liked it to be, but it's okay. It, we do see the brown down here. The fossilized amber, not so much. So I'll glue it down now. And then we'll add a little headband. So that's one and I will continue with these in the same way and show you when they're done. So I've dried these with my heat gun. They are more or less dry. Now either you can peel them off. So I tried that here on the edge so they do come off. But then I was thinking why not just strengthen them further by actually leaving them on this baking paper. So I'm going to <laughs> glue this part back on and then I can tear around these to give them a more raggedy shape. So I dried this again with my heat gun. Now I'm going to tear around them. I'm not happy with this one yet at all. First of all, <laughs> I glued over all of my stitches and second of all look how these leaves blend into the background they don't really stand out at all so I will need to figure something out for that I'm going to add some gold watercolor to the veins of the leaves in the hope that they will come out more I actually like just leaving the halves painted in gold. That looks pretty nice. Then I'll cut out this kangaroo, although honestly I have no idea how I'm going to make that work. So here it is, cut out, inked up. I am not feeling this anywhere. I mean, if I had to, I would probably put it on this one, but no. I'm not feeling this. So I'm going to put this aside for now in the hope that I will come to some solution. But what I am feeling is these snails that are from a recent freebie. I will link this freebie again for you below because these are so fun to play with. I think these would be really cool buttons. 
I think I want to add a button on this one and maybe on this one, probably not on this one. The biggest ones are too big. So this size, I think would go well with this one. And then for this one, I'll take an even smaller one. We can make buttons out of pretty much anything, as long as it's not too bulky. All we need to do is to adhere them to something a little bit more sturdy. I mean, even these could be buttons on their own, but I do want to make them more sturdy. So I'll just glue them on some cardboard. Then we obviously cut them out. Again, these nails have an easy shape to cut around. I very much appreciate that. Then I'm going to ink up the edges with walnut stain. So this is nice and thick now. Then I'll take my awl and make two holes in each of them. And there's our little snail button. <laughs> I'm going to use the same red thread that I have here and I'm going to sew the button right through my paper. And then I can just tie it off in the back. And I'll do the same thing with this one here with my gold thread. So there's the second button. The only difference is that I tied the threads in the front rather than in the back. So these two have buttons and for this one I want to add something else. So I have this bag of rusted metal pieces. So as you can see, it's a mixture of safety pins, washers, gears, nails, and other bits. And the way I got them rusty is by just leaving these pieces in water. If you do that for a few weeks, you just leave it in water. I had them in a jar and I just filled up the water when the water was getting lower than the pieces. And I just kept it in there probably for two months or something. And I would have left them in there, but I moved and I didn't want to take them in the jar with the water. So I just dumped them out let them air dry and put them in this bag. So this is the state they're in now. But when you touch them now, you get very dirty. So then what you need to do if you actually want to use one of these pieces is to wipe them off. So let's pick a piece. For example, this safety pin. Look at this, all the rust is coming off. And I'm just going to rub it otherwise the whole journal is going to get rusty. But the cool thing is, is that the coloration is going to stay, some of it anyway. In this case, not so much. I don't know, can you see? I mean, it still looks like an older paper clip and not a shiny new one, which is what it was. I did this with another one yesterday and that one had a lot more rust on it. Look at this one. This one looks fabulous. So this is what I want to add to this third tea bag. I think this would look really nice here on the side. I could just glue this on, but I think it would be cooler if I actually stitch it on by hand. So I have my embroidery threads here and I want to choose a color which is similar to the green I have. Yeah, I think this darkest green is the best. So then I'll make a few stitches around the bottom here. And then I'll do a few up here. And since this one still needs more contrast, I'm going to go back to this kangaroo. <laughs> and what if we slide that in there where the button is? Just kind of have it there as a focal point. 
He's not so bad. And I decided it needed some more gold thread, so I added some where the head is. And then I also want to have some stamped words on this one. And rather than stamping those directly on here, because I don't really know where I want them, I'm going to stamp them on one of the white plies of a napkin so that I can then tear around them and see where to place them. And the white will disappear once I add it with my matte gel. So I have these tiny, tiny sentiments. These are from Finna Bear. I can't tell you what stamp they're from. I bought this years ago in the US. Didn't keep the packaging because that was before I made videos. So I'm going to choose the sentiments. Your story matters and make room for your voice. And I'm using Stazon Jet Black ink, which is a permanent ink, which is very important so that I don't smear it when I add my matte medium on top. Mm, I can do that one better. That's another reason why it's good to stamp it on something else first, because you can always stamp it again. Eh, no, the other end isn't good. <laughs> we need even pressure. That's better. So here, make room for your voice, the top one, and then the lowest one. Your story matters. Then I'll take a wet brush and go around them. It's probably too close. I really have to be careful not to tear into the words. <laughs> it's really hard to make a bigger border. Fingers crossed. I don't tear into it. Okay. Success. I'm tempted to have these come out of the leaves. But I'm not sure I'm brave enough to do that. <sighs> no, 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 no. So I think I'll go with something more traditional. Make room for your voice. Your story matters. I'm going to be a chicken here and just do that. I expected them to blend in a little bit more, but I'm okay with this. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to add these to this journal. I'm going to put those aside for now, but I do want to add this right away. I consider this my main piece because it has the kangaroo. And I already know which page I want to add it to. It's one that is fairly blank. It actually has a pocket on it. Right here. So I want this to go on here, but of course that doesn't look like much, does it? So underneath, I want to add some of this beautiful rusted fabric. I don't remember now if I already explained this in another video, <laughs> but it's a tablecloth into which I wrapped some rusty bits like this. And then I put that on an old baking dish and I kept spraying it with a mixture of apple vinegar and water. So I did that maybe for a day that I kept spraying it every few hours and then I left it until it was dry. And then I got this gorgeous fabric. So I want to use some of this underneath our tea bag. I don't want to waste the part that's underneath here. So I'll just cut two strips. Let's fray it a little bit. This side is already frayed. And I also want to shorten this a little bit. So I'll glue those pieces on like that. I'm going to use textile glue. If I didn't have textile glue, I would just simply use tacky glue or PVA glue or whatever else I had on hand. But I definitely want to spread it out with a brush because I don't want any lumps.
And this is the perfect opportunity for another goodie because I have papers in my shop with scans of these beautiful rust fabric pieces. So I have two sets in my shop. One is the rust fabric paper, which is this. And then I also have some beautiful rust paper. So two different sets of background and you get 50% off with the code DEF2022RUST by adding that to the relevant box at the checkout from today, December 21st to December 31st. Another thing I want to do is to edge these two sentiments with gold. I figure since they're not really blending in, we might as well just have them stick out. And for more contrast, I'm going to add some black splatters. And I can stick these two into this pocket until I know what to do with them. Button and a tea bag and our kangaroo done. Only four more to go. Oh no. See you back here tomorrow. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah. <laughs>